What's up? I hope you're doing well today. I'm very excited because, oh my god, man, I got this GoPro Hero 12 a few weeks ago and um, I did an unboxing. You can watch it in this other video somewhere here if you haven't watched it yet, where I unboxed the GoPro Hero 12, the Creator Bundle Edition, and I also unboxed the Insta360 Ace Pro, which is like you know, one of the main competitors right now and the DJI Action 4. But in this video, I just wanna talk about the GoPro Hero 12. If you got one and you don't know how to start, you want to learn more, you know, like a few tips, how to get started, how to make better videos with your Hero 12. And by the end of the video, I'll also give like some bonus tips on how you can edit your videos fast with your smartphone. All right, since I'm, I've got this creative bundle, I just wanna show you quickly what's inside and how you can use these accessories that come with it. If you want to see like an extended video, watch the video that I recommended before. So let's quickly see what's inside. The Creator Bundle comes with, you know, this barrier bank and it's got some controls as you can see here. So you can like start recording and you can switch modes from the buttons from the controls here. It comes also with the GoPro Media Mod that it has a directional microphone here for better audio, as well as inside here, I hope you can see it, it's got some ports. So the HDMI port, if you wanna connect it to a monitor or a TV, and then it's got the USB-C cable for recharging and connect it to different devices, as well as audio jack port, 3.5 millimeters, I think. That is pretty cool as well as the microphone on top and plug this in, then close it like that. Then let's turn it on and see how it looks. Oh, we got it here. And you can also see like the audio levels as I'm speaking because it's picking up from the directional microphone here. From the settings, you can choose what microphone you want to use. So like front or rear microphone or both of them and yeah it's pretty cool i really i highly suggest you know to get this bundle the creator bundle if you especially if you shoot like a lot of blogs and you know you want to have more control over your gopro now sd cards and battery replacements well the gopro hero 12 comes with one battery normally and it should come also with an sd card it really depends on the seller on the where you buy it from so it's not guaranteed but when i bought this gopro it came with one battery and i think it didn't have an sd card but i highly suggest you to get another battery at least another battery or a couple of more but extra batteries if you're planning to shoot for like the whole day the battery on the hero 12 lasts longer about two hours and a half if you don't shoot at like the highest resolution of frame rates so let's say if you have 4k at 30 fps or even 1080p at 120 fps or 60 fps or 30 fps the gopro should last between two hours and two and a half hours i've experienced that's better than the previous models but again if you're planning to shoot like let's say now right now i'm in uh, in a ski resort and when I go skiing, when I go up the mountains, I spend like maybe four or five hours up there and yeah, I get my GoPro out of my pocket or maybe I mount it on my chest and like I keep recording for quite long and yeah, I realized that one battery it might not be enough, especially in, you know, in cold environments. So yeah, I highly suggest to get another battery. I've left some links down in the description if you want to get to uh, directly to, you know, to the products on Amazon. So check it out. Then, either than the battery, I also recommend to get an SD card with an, enough space. It always depends what you need to shoot, how long you need to shoot it for, and also depends on the resolutions. If you shoot with a higher resolution, obviously the file size will be bigger, way bigger than, you know, lower resolutions. So be careful on that. And I experienced that an SD card with at least 128 or 250 six gigabytes should be enough for like a full day of shooting make sure that usd cards it's at least class 10 otherwise you'll have problems while recording you know the files might not save up and you might have corrupted files which is not so nice i'm gonna do another video specifically on the best sd cards for gopro hero 12 so subscribe to the channel 
so that you don't miss any further video that I publish. Now let's see how to set up your GoPro Hero 12 for the first shooting. You can see that there are two main, only two main buttons, the mode button and the rec button. So from these two buttons, you can co control your GoPro as well as from the screen, from the touch screen. So now let's turn on the GoPro Hero 12 by pressing on the mode button for like a couple of seconds. You will see that the screen turns on and the screen changes also the direction as you move and turn your GoPro. You can easily see what's going on and can do landscape or portrait mode shots. And um, you can see that if you want to change the mode from video to photo to time-lapse, you can just press the mode button quickly like that. So that will go through, you know, the different modes. If you want to switch the GoPro off, just press and hold the mode button and that will switch the GoPro off, very simply. Now, the rec button also works when the GoPro is off, if you enable it from the settings. So that is called a quick capture feature, meaning that if you have your GoPro turned off, you can just press once on the button on the rec button and it will start recording right away. Now, if I press again the rec button, it will you know, switch off the GoPro and stop the recording. This is a pretty cool feature. Now, let's turn on the GoPro again so I can show you all of the generic settings and what you can expect from, you know, from the menu, from the menu settings and how you can navigate through the settings. So now we are in video mode. You can see that on the main screen, you have some quick buttons uh, you can customize, you know, the order of these buttons here, depending on what you prefer to have on the screen. So right now, by default, I have the field of view settings here. So you can quickly change the field of view by tapping here. And then you can see you can scroll from hyper view all the way to linear, which is like a narrow view of your GoPro. That's pretty cool. And now let's go back and you can see that here we've got the stabilization settings, which goes from completely off. So like this, it's disabled and then you can move it to on, which is got like a on basically it's got some stabilization and then you got auto boost, which is got like the maximum stabilization possible that your GoPro Hero 12 can have, but this, uh, it's decided by the GoPro itself. So whenever there is a big shake, then the GoPro will apply more stabilization based on the, on the situation. Then we've got this button here, which takes you to the main menu settings of video. In this case, because we are in video mode, you can change the resolution, frame rate and FOV, like field of view. You can select how much stabilization you would like to have. So, you know, off, on or auto boost. And then you got capture settings, which are basically, you know, scheduled capture, duration, timer, all of the things that are related to timing. So like you want to start recording with your GoPro at a certain time, you can do it here. Protune settings are like the advanced settings of the GoPro. With these settings, you can uh, basically take control, take more control of your GoPro by manual settings. Like for example, shutter. The shutter of course is digital, but from here you can choose either to have it on auto. So the GoPro will decide everything by itself based on the, on the lighting conditions that you have got, or if you've got some specific requirements or some specific settings that you want to use, then you can do it manually. You can just select it yourself. I usually leave this on auto because it's quite, it's quite easy to leave it on auto and it, the GoPro usually does a good job. Then we got the white balance, which now it's on auto. You can see that you can go from a cold uh, color to all the way to uh, warm colors, depending on the environment, of course. So now we just leave it on auto. In most cases, it's fine. Then we move on to the ISO, min and max. With this setting, you control the sensitivity of the sensor. So how much, how sensitive the sensor is with light. I would highly recommend you to leave ISO min all the time at 100 and ISO max either between 800 and 1600. Why? Because if you 
go all the way up to let's like, say 6400 then you like your video will likely have noise if you're shooting in the dark then we move on to the sharpness i like to have it on medium so it's not as sharp as high it's not as like sharp as low medium i think it's it's a good balance color then gopro you can select three different color presets on your gopro you got flat which doesn't apply any color it's just a flat this is good if you're planning to apply lots different filters on post-production by the way we've got one of the best filters or lots for gopro users they are cinematic filters it makes they, they turn your videos more cinematic you know just with one click in post-production you can check them out down in the description i use these lots every time you know i i make a video they give like a really nice color a nice contrast to your videos then you have natural which it's basically a natural color profile and then you got vibrant when you select vibrant gopro will apply a vibrant look to your video after that we got raw audio you can control how your gopro captures audio from here i usually keep it on off because this is only if you know what you're doing or if you want to record like a kind of professional audio or raw audio if you need to edit your audio but yeah in most cases it's on off then wind with this setting you can control whether your gopro wants to apply wind reduction or or not i usually keep it on auto the weather can change quite quickly so the gopro itself can decide whether to apply like wind reduction or not media mode now this setting it's not enabled because the media mode is not connected so when i connect it, it will be enabled do we want to see it together let's have a look what happens when i connect the gopro to the media mode how this setting changes so let's do that you can see now it's enabled so when i click on it you can choose what camera mic you want to enable with this shortcuts as i showed you before on the main screen you have some shortcuts you can customize these buttons from that setting let's select zoom so we can see how that changed you see now we have the zoom button here from these buttons you can restore the settings to default settings or save these settings as a preset this is quite interesting because it allows you to save all of the different settings that you have based on the environments so let's say you go skiing you want to shoot ski videos and you know that some certain settings work pretty well while doing ski videos then you can select all of the settings and save them for the next time you go skiing don't forget to download the cheat sheet because on that you can find all of the suggested settings for your gopro also gopro hero 12 the settings that you find on the cheat sheet you can save them here on your gopro and then with that you can use them in different environments if you change mode and go to photo settings you will have different kind of settings for photography there are already some custom settings they allow you to shoot photos in burst mode so like in a sequence very fast let's say if you're jumping or you're doing some kind of fast action and you want to capture like a series of photos very fast to capture that action burst is the setting that you need to go for then we got night photos this basically allows your gopro to have a longer exposure so you can capture more light at night after that if we click on mode button again we can we switch on time warp time warp is basically a time lapse on motion while you're moving if you tap here on the settings you can see that gopro has already got some presets for you uh, that you can use for different kind of photography styles like star trails this allows you to capture like videos on on the stars you know over a period of time light painting is also pretty cool you want to choose this setting if you are in a night environment it's pretty dark and you've got like a torch or a light and you can paint into in the sky and create some very creative shots vehicle lights this setting is pretty cool when you've got like cars passing by and you're capturing all of these lights of the cars during an extended period of time so you will see like lines uh, in your photos then we got time lapse this is a standard time lapse that you can capture 
to various things like moving clouds, for example, where you got your GoPro, like still in some place on a tripod, ideally. In front of you, you got like clouds and stuff that move over a certain period of time, like let's say in one hour time, you can leave your GoPro sitting there, hit the record, and then the GoPro will take a video of let's say 10, 15 seconds, the clouds moving really fast. You can use this kind of shot, you know, to switch between scenes in your videos. If you want to show that time has passed, you can easily put a time lapse there showing clouds or showing other things. Then as a last setting, we got night lapse. Same as time lapse, so we will take a time lapse of your scene, but at night. We can navigate the generic settings of your GoPro by just swiping down like that and you have a few different settings that are more kind of generic for your GoPro and they are not specifically controlling the quality of your videos or your photos. So these can be like switching on or off the Bluetooth or changing language, enabling or disabling voice control. You can also format your SD card from this button here, manage SD card. If I click, GoPro will ask me if I want to delete all of the media that I've got inside my SD card. I'm not going to do it right now. And from here you can also upload, set up auto upload to the GoPro cloud. So all of the footage that is saved in your GoPro can be uploaded automatically whenever the GoPro connected to the internet. If you swipe from bottom to top, you will see that you access to the gallery and all of the videos and photos you have taken are here. If you swipe from left to right, it will just change mode as well as from right to left it will change mode it, it's got the same function of button on the on the side now let's see how to connect your gopro euro 12 to gopro quick on your mobile phone first of all you need to download the app from the app store and then you should be able to connect your phone to your gopro swipe down swipe left click on pair device and that will search devices as you can see, it's still searching. So you need to enable the Bluetooth on your phone as well. It's found my phone, so quick app. It's already connected. So now if I go back on my phone, I should be able to control my GoPro. I go on GoPro, I can see GoPro Hero 12 black. Camera has been found. I click on it. You can update the firmware by typing on this three dots and then there is a new firmware available. I'm going to update it right now because it's always good to have it up to date at all times. So I'm going to update it. This is what you can expect once you connect your phone to the GoPro. You can see that you can control the GoPro settings from the phone. You can control all of the settings, everything that you want from here without touching the GoPro. All right, let's move on to the GoPro accessories I like and use the most with the GoPro Hero 12, but not only with this model, with most GoPros. So now let's start from the chest mount because when I go skiing, like right now I'm in Bulgaria, in the mountains of Bulgaria, I'm spending like a month here. So I've got my GoPros and I usually like to shoot my, you know, ski trips while I go with my GoPros, with my action cameras and be able to enjoy the moment I have my hands free. So if you want to keep your hands free and like don't think about shooting or you know framing the shot perfectly, you can just mount your GoPro on your body with these chest mounts or even on your helmet with helmet mounts or on your head with the head mount. These are just like straps that I've got down here. Let me take it for you. So, First of all, let's start with the chest mount. You can find this on Amazon. I've got, I left some links down in the descriptions in case you want to check them out. This goes like so. And then you mount it like that. Then you'll have your GoPro mounted on your chest, like so. Now, I'm not going to screw it in, but you can see you can have like your hands can be free and the GoPro records everything it's in front of you. Tripod, it's always useful for anything that you want to do, like a time lapse or even if you want to record yourself, you just place your GoPro here, you screw it in and you use the tripod, you know, to mount your GoPro anywhere. And this is like a flexible tripod. It's quite nice because you can attach this on, you know, on trees or on other objects 
uh, it's by Joby. It's one of the best tripods, you know, for this purpose. All right, now let's move on to the bonus section of this video, which is editing. In this section, I'm gonna show you how to perform a quick edit just with your smartphone using GoPro Quick app. If you haven't downloaded the app from the App Store, please do so right now. It's a free app that comes with GoPro. After you downloaded it, you need to connect the app to the GoPro by enabling the Bluetooth on both devices. You should be able to see your GoPro here in the app. Now it's already connected and there is no footage to download because I've already done that before. But if this is the first time for you, you should be able to see the GoPro first and then here there should be like a download button and then when you click it, all of the footage from the GoPro should go on your phone. Then you can also choose to upload all of this footage to the cloud, to GoPro cloud, so you'll have the footage on the cloud at all times. In that way, you can also free up the space in the SD cards of your GoPro. As you can see here, I can click scan for new footage. It's going to join the Wi-Fi because of course you need to have an internet connection in order to upload everything to the cloud. Now it's joining the GoPro network so it will communicate to the GoPro and see if there is any footage to download. It hasn't found any new footage because I did that before. So now you can go on um, media and then if you download all of the media from the GoPro to the phone, you'll see all of the medias here on the phone. And yeah, these are the two medias I had on, on my GoPro. As you can see, there is nothing uh, exciting. It's just a random clip. But if you want to create an edit, it's quite simple. You can do so by going on to uh, mural section click add to mural and then you can select the shots that you want to include in the edit. I will tap on videos. I will choose some random videos. Let's say this one and then this one and this one and this one add to mural. This function basically creates auto edits, automatic edits for you. It will like get the best parts of the footage and assemble together to, to make an edit for you. This is a quick way to edit your footage very fast if you don't want to invest any of your time in the editing section. It's been done automatically by the app, so it, it don't expect like amazing results. You can always like edit the automatic edit that the app has done for you. So like adjust a few things and tweak it in order to like make a better edit. But I don't like to do that. I like to do everything manual so that I choose what to include, what to exclude. I choose my music, I choose my transitions and you know, everything like that. It will take more time, yes, but the results will be way better. And it's also creative and nice to do once you know how to do it. As you can see here, you can easily edit every single clip. Just tap on the clip that you want to edit and you can like trim it. You can you can add more clips if you want. Like so, you can edit the clip itself. You can trim, for example, from here. And let's say I just want a little bit of that and not the whole clip. So you can trim from here. You can, ch you can change the framing. You can add filters to have a different look on your videos. As you can see here, you can change the speed. So like slow down a clip or speed it up. If you shot in slow motion, you can do that easily. You can see, you can speed it up or slow it down. You can change the volume of the clip. You can change the music also by tapping on music. There are like some preset musics that you can choose from. There are different themes that you can choose for the automatic edit, edit by the app. These are pretty cool features. Again, if you don't want to spend you know, time in uh, 
in making like a, a custom edit from scratch. I mean, you can also do the edits on the computer. That's what I prefer to do with professional software like Final Cut Pro on Mac or Premiere Pro on you know Windows and Mac. But if you, if you are someone that doesn't care about all of that and just wants like a highlights of the day recorded by your GoPro, then yeah, you can use GoPro Quick. And I hope this tutorial, you know, got you started with your GoPro. I hope you learned new things. If you did, please leave a like and leave a comment. Let me know how this video helped you. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Peace.